Dr. And um, first announcement is from Dr. Tech, who set up some sort of uh, meeting site called Discord. He said he sent you an email for it. Um, he plans to use it for social interaction. He also plans to use it for office hours for his students. I kind of like Zoom, so I'm probably going to stay with that. But I just wanted to direct you to your email. He said he sent it, but people may not look at it. It is in there. It gives details how to do it. You have to apparently sign up for a Discord account in order to use this thing. All right, I was just checking the homework on WebAssign. It looks like everybody submitted, but if you were there in the last oh, day or so, you noticed I put in homework five. Homework five is due before class next time, next, uh, next week, uh, Wednesday. Um, and the reason I made it before class is that's the last homework assignment that will be on the first midterm, which is also next week, Wednesday. And that, it takes us right up until this, um, this lecture today, this, this class today on photoelectric effect. And so the homework five is on black body radiation and uh, photoelectric effect. I think there's either four or five problems, um, not particularly long, about the same as, as the previous uh, four homework assignments that you've had. Uh, let me see how many we got here. One, two, And if I can turn the page, three, four, I thought there was a fifth though. Any event, there, um, Wien's Law, uh, Stefan Boltzmann's Law, and Photoelectric Effect, which we'll be talking about today. And that's, that'll be the end of the material for the, the midterm next week. I expect the midterm to have two components. I expect it to have a part on WebAssign for one or two problems and then a part that's more like a worksheet where you print it out or just answer the questions on a blank sheet of paper and you upload them into Canvas. Um, the exam will be open book. I will have an equation sheet that I'll provide you for your convenience. Uh, you can use anything on the Canvas website. Uh, you can use anything in notes that you've taken throughout the semester so far. What you can't do is you can't go to resources out on the web. and Specifically, that is it includes Chegg and any other any other resource like that, where people just post solutions to uh, physics problems. Um, in terms of calculators, you can use any engineering calculator you want. If you got one of those cool TI Inspires, you can use that. Uh, but just to make it equalized for people who don't own a TI Inspire, which does an awful lot of symbolic mathematics, if you want to use MathNet or Wolfram Alpha or any of those sort of calculator programs, any other app that you have that you use to do derivatives, integrals, um, you know, to solve multiple equations with multiple unknowns, anything like that, uh, you can use an app uh, or a, a website to do that. Any questions on the exam? Scope of it will be from day one, which is the optics review we did right through today's lecture, which is photoelectric effect. I did put some extra homework assignments in WebAssign uh, that have example problems that are above and beyond the minimum. You might look at those. I would review your worksheets and uh, any of the WebAssign homework that you already did. And that's probably a good way to prepare. All right, so Discord, homework five due next week and uh, exam next week. Now, who else are we missing besides Sam? Well, we'll figure it out in a little bit. All right, so what we're talking about today is this thing called the photoelectric electric effect. And if I could, I'm going to share my screen with you uh, for just a moment. And then I'm going to, I've got a couple animations to show you as well. And so, all right, there it is. And, you know, you got to love these uh, um, turn of the century physicists, because boy, if you didn't have a glass blower on your physics department or natural philosophy department, whatever you called yourself back in the 19, early 1900s, late 1800s, if you didn't have a glass blower who could make these tubes for you and then some kind of vacuum pump so that you can, they can pull the air all out of the tube or inject some sort of uh, a gas, you weren't doing physics apparently in the early 1900s. Because here's one more, the photoelectric effect where we have this tube uh, that's in this case evacuated, no gas in it. And um, unlike creating cathode rays with just large voltages and maybe some, uh, some heating up, so you had thermionic emission at, at that emitter site, what they did is they brought incident light in. 
And uh, the, in the interesting part is they thought that the brighter the incident light, the more electrons might be liberated from that photoelectric material that's at the emitter. And that just turned out to be completely false. No matter, they couldn't come up with a bright enough light to cause um, electrons to be emitted until they changed the color of the light to be a higher frequency. And then all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden the electrons flowed like crazy. And the higher the frequency of the light, the greater the kinetic energy of the electrons that were emitted was. And the way they did that is they took this power supply and they put some back electric field to push the electrons back. And so they put a, a voltage right there and it created an electric field that pushes the electrons back. And they knew what the kinetic energy was by just balancing it just right with that voltage to push the electrons back. Okay, and then that was a measure of the kinetic energy. And so from that idea, they're able to see, well, yeah, the um, the greater the frequency that we put in, the more it is towards violet instead of red in the visible spectrum, uh, the greater the kinetic energy of the electrons that are kicked off that emitter plate. And Einstein's the guy who comes along and, and, and solves this for us, okay? Um, because uh, in 1905, there was no good classical explanation for this. I do want to just, just as an aside, because uh, it's something that... Uh, the juniors and the seniors are talking about in, uh, in their seminar, which is how as physicists, we've always been um, a little bit racist, a little bit maybe uh, anti-Semitic. In fact, in 1905, Einstein publishes the answer to the photoelectric effect. It was one of his three miraculous papers that he writes while he's a patent clerk in Switzerland. And he ac actually explains to the world what I'm about to say right here in 1905. And uh, he doesn't win the Nobel Prize for it that year. In fact, a guy named Philip Leonard, who just does some research in photoelectric effect and finds out the problems but can't explain what we just what, what Einstein's about to explain, he wins the Nobel Prize in, in 1905. And um, Philip Leonard's claim to fame in World War I was developing uh, some of the gases that killed soldiers on the battlefield in World War I. He goes on then to become uh, Hitler's physicist. Uh, once uh, Hitler in the 1920s, when Hitler and his uh, his Nazi party are taking over Germany. And so uh, clearly it was physicists like Leonard and others of, uh, of that ilk in Europe at that time uh, just diminished Einstein's work initially in 1905. Ultimately in 1922, uh, the, nobody can deny the work is brilliant and he finally wins the uh, Nobel Prize Einstein does in 1922 for explaining uh, the photoelectric effect, uh, which Leonard was unable to do in 1905. And if anybody just read Einstein's paper, they would have had the answer. So that, that delay from 1905 when Einstein writes the paper till 1922 uh, when he wins the Nobel Prize for the, explaining the photoelectric effect, I, I think is, a, is evidence of, of the anti-Semitism that existed in physics and across the world, I would say, uh, in the early 1900s. Any event, off topic here, but I think it is, it is an interesting thing and it's you know, the upper class, the juniors and seniors are talking about this sort of thing, um, and not just anti-Semitism, uh, anti but just anti-anything, anti-racism against anti-whatever, uh, against people by kind of the, 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 the controlling entities of, of our discipline and how we're trying not to do that. And how we believe it's better for the discipline to get more people in. That's more women, that's more uh, diversity, that's what we're looking for. Any events, off topic, uh, what Einstein came up with though, the reason they were seeing the effect, he said, look, this I think called a photon has to exist. That electromagnetic radiation that's coming in, it's not continuous, it's partitioned up into little energy segments. Each of them has an amount of energy equal to that Planck's constant times the frequency. And remember Planck's constant was uh, first reared its head in what was truthfully just a mathematical fit done by the scientist Max Planck uh, to explain black body radiation. And there was this term, his constant times a frequency that showed up in the exponent of an exponential, right? And here it is again in a completely different experiment, but it explains 
why a particular frequency is necessary to kick an electron off some sort of metal. Um, and if you didn't have that particular frequency, if your frequency was too low, it, it didn't get there. And so HF is the minimum frequency you have to have above this thing called a work function. And I've shown some typical work functions for a number of metal uh, photoelectric materials. So your, your HF has to be at least as big as one of those work functions. Okay, then that's the energy in a photon. So it has to have a particular frequency in order to kick an electron loose. If HF is greater than that work function, well, then any extra energy that exists will come off as kinetic energy, one half mv squared. And so that, that, that psi, I, I guess, phi symbol there is, um, is called the work function, tabulated over there. And one of the ways that in fact, the, the only way I know that they were able to measure what that kinetic energy was, was to uh, run a back uh, electromotive force, a, a backwards uh, voltage that pushed the electrons back. And when they had the voltage just right, that they stopped electrons from getting through, that means they had a, a potential energy of the charge times that voltage equal to one half mv squared and they knew what the kinetic energy must have been because all of a sudden electrons stopped flowing to the collector on the other side and they'd see no current. Here's my simulation of that so I'm going to stop sharing. Any questions on that? I think I'm going to stop sharing this screen and I went to um, I went to that uh, King's University in Edmonton, Alberta site for this because I thought their simulation was pretty good and um, let me put this away so I can see. And so here's the group. By the way, I was playing before class with this planetary climates. And it was what we did on the worksheets uh, on Monday where we were predicting, okay, is the earth gonna heat up? Is it gonna cool down? That's what this planetary climate does. It looks at black body radiation of the earth, vice, uh, the radiation from the sun that hits the earth. And you know, are we a, are we a viable planet? Are we heating up? Are we cooling down? It's a, it's a neat little thing to play with. Uh, you can see that if we change conditions like what our greenhouse gases are, we could move the earth out to about where Mars is and still it would still be habitable about 20 degrees C. Any event, uh, launching a photoelectric effect. Hopefully you're seeing this right here. And just because I, I, it opened a pop-up are you seeing the pop-up window of my glass tube with light coming in? Somebody just give me a thumbs up or a, a put, a, put a note in chat. Or are you still seeing the basic? Let me, let me try and make sure I got it going here. Uh, let me reshare that particular guy right there. And now I'm sure because it's got the green border, you're seeing it. Okay, and so let me, uh, let me back up a little bit. I was playing with this earlier today too. And see this little slider here? that tells you what the uh, color, what the frequency, and you can see frequency in Hertz there, of the incident radiation is. And you can see, um, hopefully, let me make this full screen. Yeah, you can see it, good. Um, hope you, hopefully you can though. You can see that the light is coming in, right? Hitting, in this case, a sodium um, photo electric material and no electrons are coming out. And so the thought was, well, let's just kick up the density make them come in faster and faster with more energy. More energy should eventually cause electrons to be kicked off the sodium, right? You're hitting it with this intense light. Eventually you should make some, some electrons jiggle free. And you know, in the time they just could not get a, um, a, an intensity of light, a bright enough light to make this happen. And so some, probably by accident, I would think, let's go back to mid range density here. So they, what they did is they tried some different colors Okay, and so now we're kind of in the orange range, and then we're moving towards the brighter orange, and then a little bit into the yellow, and then we start to go for literally kind like of greenish yellow. And right about as I'm just stopped, ah, there's an electron all of a sudden, and what frequency, well, I'm right, I'm kind of in the greenish, eh, yellow to green part of the visible frequency, and all of a sudden, electrons are liberated. I go to a slightly lower frequency, so that HF is just a little less, and so I move a little bit towards the red side, a little bit more towards the yellow side of green, nothing happens. I move just beyond that threshold, just enough to overcome that work function of sodium, and sure enough, I've even got enough 
uh, extra energy to give it a little bit of kinetic energy to push it to the uh, to that collector plate, and it ultimately registers as a current, which you can you can see um, uh, pico amps, very small amount of current, but good to go. And in order to figure out how much kinetic energy they had, in order to work back to what the work function must be, let's just put a negative voltage here. Okay, and you see what happens? I got way too much voltage there. They didn't even make it a quarter of the way across the tube, maybe a fifth of the way across the tube before the electrons are sent back. So let's uh, let's lower the voltage just a little bit. I don't know if I'll be able to balance this. Yeah, I'm 0.2, this is 0.1. And we just keep sending the electrons back. I don't. Let's. Here's what we'll do, though. What was the thought? Well, if I increase the frequency, and you'll see they'll be going faster now because I'm increasing the kinetic energy. So I increase the frequency of the incident light. I increase the energy of the incident light, h times frequency, and I increase the kinetic energy of the electrons, the blue dots, which are emitted. Okay. Let's make it even more obvious. We're now being the blue. See how much faster they're going? They're actually overtaking the electrons that were made when I was in, uh, sending kind of green light on. Okay, and so coming with a lot of extra uh, kinetic energy, we, the, the HF for this particular blue light far exceeds the work function of sodium, and you can see the kinetic energy. And now let's increase this voltage and it redoes itself. Okay, so I got about a half a volt. That's not enough to turn them around. That's full volt. You can get up to see the volts too much. It didn't get across. Okay, so you can see I've turned the uh, the initial kinetic energy. Now I'm causing the uh, so it's somewhere between about 0.5 and 0.6 is enough to reverse. Let's try that. The electrons just don't quite make it across. And you can see if you balance that delicately, you could know exactly what the kinetic energy of the electrons is and compare that to HF, the frequency times Planck's constant of the, of the energy coming in from the photon. And if you just get it right, you can figure out what the work function of sodium must exactly be. Any questions on that? Is that a, a sensible thing? Does that make sense with, uh, with what you saw in, as you did your reading, watch my little video? I think it's a good animation though, if it, if it helps you see it. And of course you go out into the ultraviolet wavelengths and boy, those things are just zipping across, right? Uh, and you, in order to turn them around here, even I'd have to crank the voltage up quite a bit more, right? Because the higher the frequency, the greater the energy of the photon coming in, the greater the kinetic energy of the electron, which is liberated. And you can see my electric field becoming bigger and bigger. Yep, I'm see, yep, oh, look at that. I just slowed them down just about right uh, with that amount of voltage. Just got lucky there, about 2.8 volts, turn the electrons right around. They just barely got to the collector, but not quite. Okay, and so, you know, th that's how uh, work functions are, are, are figured out. I'm going to stop sharing this. I got one more animation to show you, which kind of encapsulates encapsul what I've been showing you here. And uh, where is, yeah, I can put that one away, put that one away, and open up, nope, wrong guy, open up this guy, and I have an active figure to show you here. And Chrome, there it is. I see the green border, so we should be good to go. And slightly different geometry for this experiment. Rather than bringing the light in obliquely from the top, it's coming in through a hole in the collector. And so the thing is reversed here. The collector used to be on the right side. Now it's on the left. The emitter is on the, uh, is on the right. And you can see, I'll put it right in the middle here. Um, the intensity is medium. The metal has a medium work function. And the very first thing I can do is I can sweep through frequency and see nothing's being emitted until we get to that green light and then all of a sudden off come the electrons, right? And our interesting thing about this plot, if you look at the equation that we were talking about, well, let me annotate here, and this is dangerous because I might lose my, uh, 
I might lose my, uh, my, my cursor, but we said that HF is equal to, uh, let's see, the kinetic energy plus the work function. Okay, and notice I'm plotting kinetic energy here and I'm plotting frequency here. So let's rearrange this equation just slightly. So kinetic energy is equal to HF plus, oops, that won't work, minus, minus the work function, right? And so look, there's what's on the x-axis. That's what's on the y-axis, and it's a straight line, son of a gun. Equation of a straight line must be equal to that. So apparently the slope of this line here, if I figure the slope of that line, the change in the kinetic energy divided by the change in the frequency, that must be Planck's constant, right? And furthermore, the y-intercept right here, that must be the work function, right? Okay, and it is negative as, as is predicted right here. All right, so I, I think from an experiment like that where you can sweep through frequencies, okay, starting, uh, I got to go back to my cursor now. Starting with a low frequency, higher frequency, you, if you could create what the kinetic energy of the electrons were as a function of frequency, you've made a measurement of uh, Planck's constant, haven't you? And that's kind of interesting. All right, one other thing I want to do for you here, we'll stop this. I uh, will keep doing it again. Uh, we'll let it do its thing. Very exciting animation. Let's sweep through voltage this time. And that's the voltage we're talking about is the, the voltage which is going to push the electrons back. In this case, I guess, um, uh, push them back towards, uh, towards the emitter on the right. And so let's sweep through some voltages here. And you can see at some point you cross over, you hit this point, and all the electrons go back. And notice I'm at a negative voltage, which means the collector here is negative. Okay, so it's it's a negative electric negative uh, C collector right there. It's repelling the electrons back to the emitter, which is positive. And you can see that's an important uh, voltage right there because that kind of tells us what the kinetic energy is, doesn't it? And it's called the uh, stopping potential or stopping or retarding uh, potential sometimes. And that's another experiment you can do. And what they found, of course, uh, if, you, if you did your reading, is if I increase the intensity here, this thing didn't change. If I increase the intensity, I'm drawing straight lines. What might have happened is something like that is all that would have happened. That's a greater intensity. And then another greater intensity even still would have been something like that. Okay, this point didn't change is the, is the deal here. And no matter what the intensity was, and there was a minimum wavelength. And if you didn't, um, if you didn't exceed that wavelength, you didn't get photoelectric effect. All right, so we're gonna obviously be using today um, Max, uh, Einstein's equation, we're going to be using this guy right here. And from our, our, I guess, PHY 111 class, the fact that you know kinetic energy is a one half mv squared, and that we know that the potential energy is the charge on these electrons times the voltage from PHY 112, which I know you all know, okay? And so we're gonna do a little bit of energy work on the worksheet today. Any questions on anything I said here so far? The, the worksheet will be pretty quick. All right, so then I wanna share with you real quick, because uh, I have a quick problem to do before we break up into groups. And so let me, uh, let me screen mirror, screen mirror. Good. All right. And the first one I want to do is just a pitch I always give for um, the energy of the photon that we talked about, HF. Well, if, you, if you're given the frequency in, um, in Hertz, well, use HF. Just go find a constant H off an equation sheet and just use it. But on the other hand, if you're, um, if you're not given uh, the frequency you're given the wavelength because a lot of people like to talk about the color of light in terms of the wavelength. Well, in that case, um, rather than using the constant, can I 
I got stuff in my way here. I always hate the little pop-ups. Pop-ups go away. You know, it just told me, it says, Justin, it's just, I just got a pop-up that says, you joined the meeting. Thank you. I appreciate it, uh, Apple. All right. So, but if you're given the wavelength, a better constant might be H times C. And I mentioned it on the video, and I just want to make sure we've got that constant. We see why I say it's a good one. And so I'm going to uh, just do a quick calculation here to figure out, well, what is H times C? All right, and I need my little palm protector here to make sure. So H times C, and H is given right here, 4.1357 times 10 to the fifth, minus 15th EV seconds, right? And then, of course, C is 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And so let's see, the other thing I guess I want, uh, that's EV times a second. I didn't write the full unit. Okay, well, that's good because in the meters per second and the second, those cancel. But then I want, uh, I want to go per nanometer because visible light is often given in nanometers. And so I think there's 10 to the ninth nanometers in every meter. So that thing in the, in the parentheses there is just one. And that cancels one of those. And if I do this math, and that's a C, not an E right there, so maybe I should make that a little clearer. If I go to my calculator with that, well, first of all, the units are what's left, EV nanometers, so that's handy. I go to my calculator, and sure enough, I get 1240 EV nan nanometers, okay? A nice, easy number to remember, and if you look, the reason that's a, a better way to do the problem, better constant to use, is because if I'm trying to find the energy of a photon, and I know like in the second problem here, the wavelength is given as 200 nanometers, I just divide 200 nanometers into 1240 EV nanometers, the nanometers cancel, and I'm left with the energy of the photon in electron volts, which is what, it, you know, since the work function in this problem is given in electron, electron volts, and you wanna add, uh, electron volts to electron volts because the energy unit has to be consistent, it's a much better constant to know and use. Okay, so that's my recommendation. And if it, otherwise, you can do what I did, which is take Planck's constant as 4.1357 times 10 to the minus 15th EV seconds, and you can always use the speed of light, okay, and divide by the wavelength and do all that rigmarole. But I've done it once for you up here at the start of the problem. And if you look, each of the problems that you guys are going to be doing once we break up here, you're given uh, the wavelength in some kind of nanometers, okay? All right, questions on that? You guys are too cooperative, I guess. So we're going to break up. If you look, I, there's three more problems, problem two, three, and four. We're going to go to breakout rooms and work on those in three groups. I guess it'll be two people per group. Um, and so uh, doing problem two is Jastin and Schneeha. Uh, problem three is Amea and Inaya. And breakout room three, which is doing problem four, is Max and Prince. Questions? Off to your rooms then. We'll go for about, it's about 10, 15 minutes to do the problem, then we'll come back and we'll talk.
is it? I think you just have to tap on your screen right now. Apple TV. Okay, I didn't know it mirrored to that. The internal age kit. That internet or something. Try again. There you go. And just flick it away and tap, or tap on your screen. It should be good. I think it's just my internet that's very slow. Slow, okay. Yeah. Because like on my iPad, I can see the worksheet, but. Yeah, it's kind of fuzzy for us because and we're still seeing that little, uh, that little control panel that's up in the upper right. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. All right, well, I'm going to run over to another group and hopefully it'll heal itself for you. If not, um, I could just just work it on a, uh, I could just share any, uh, any PDF document, just kind of scroll on that and I'll let you share it when we come back. Okay. All right. <laughs> Love the handwriting. That's Max's handwriting, isn't it? No, no, oh. it's Ramea. Ramea, okay. Well, all right. Love the handwriting. I can make it out though. I'll try to put units on that EV nanometer on the twelve forty. Oh yeah. You, it, I find my penmanship improved. And then, I'm uh, writing with the touchpad of the laptop. Yeah. Oh, you're using a touchpad. Uh, okay. It's even harder. Yeah, I put a mouse in my, uh, even though I have a touchpad. All right, so what do you get when you, you do that math right there? Um, One minute. Is it 2.21? 2.21, 2 exactly. That must be what the work function of the, of the uh, potassium is. And you made the decision that... Uh, Kinetic energy is zero. Yeah, which would be the absolute. Uh, that would that's at that point the energy of the photon is exactly equal to the work function because you have no leftover kinetic energy. So the I guess the electron just kicks off the plate and then can't go anywhere because it doesn't have enough kinetic energy to do it. All right, I'm going to go to the next group. You guys are ready. Uh, you can try to neaten that up just a little bit if you can, but uh, you, you know how to you know how to brief it then because you got the right answers. So I'm going to leave you guys. Okay. Hello. How you doing? You guys actually got the harder problem in B there. But let, okay, so I agree with that though. That's the you, you got the energy and you converted it to joules. Um, here's my hint for part B. So we're told the intensity is two watts per meter squared, right? Yeah. And that's the thing you're gonna work for. And you wanna remember that a watt is a joule per second. And I think I can annotate here. I'm just getting, yeah, so watt is equal to a joule per second. And so what you've got is a watt per meter squared for intensity which would be a joule per second divided by a meter squared, right? Yeah. And so what if you divided this by the number of joules, which is in each and every photon, and that means it's in each and every electron, because we're saying it's one to one, right? Mm -hmm. Divide this then by joules per electron, right? 
Yeah. And so then the joules will cancel and that'll tell me how many electrons per second for every meter squared of area that it hits, which I think is what it asks you. What's the rate of electron emission per unit area? There's your rate of emission per unit area. So I think if you just take this number right here and divide it into that number, you should be good to go. Cool. All right. Yeah, and I just did that with dimensions, didn't I? Isn't it great how you can just figure out what the answer is from units? Yeah. All right. The first group is having a little bit of technical trouble, so I'm going to run back to them. Okay. Thank you. you Thanks. Hey, look at that. It's working now. Yeah. Okay, what do you mean by P right there? Oh, work function, fee. Gotcha. Okay. I think HC by lambda comes up to like 6.2. Exactly. Yes. Volts. Yep. Yeah. So HC so, over lambda is 6.2 electron volts. So that is equal to 4.7 plus the kinetic energy of the fastest right. electron. And we just subtract the two. Exactly. Isn't this easy? Exactly. So what's your kinetic energy then? 6.2 minus 4.7. Why are we still using the classical expression of kinetic energy for the electron? It's a good question. If you calculated what the speed of the electron would be, it's not, you, you could always use the relativistic. But in this particular experiment, uh, the electrons don't come off going that fast, okay? And you can calculate, I guess, what would be the sp speed since you know uh, the kinetic energy is 1.5 EV. No, EV, EV, EV. The, the speed, though, would be um, fairly slow, okay? It would not be anywhere near the speed of light. Okay. But if, it, if you somehow were able to put a high enough frequency on that gave it a kinetic energy that was much, much higher, well, then you would have to use the relativistic kinetic energy. All right. And then the last thing is, how big does that voltage have to be in order to, um, in order to stop these electrons with that amount of kinetic energy? By the way, that's equal to K, right? Yeah. Yeah, your last thing is equal to K. You actually put two equations. You, right there at that negative sign, you, you, you started a new equation. Yeah. Okay. So what's the stopping potential? Uh... And here's my hint for you. Remember we said one half mv squared, which was the kinetic energy, can be stopped by a potential whose energy would be E times V. So it seems to me to get the stopping <coughs> potential, all you got to do is divide by E, which is kind of convenient because you got an E in your units, don't you? You got the charge on an electron in your unit. So it's just uh, the stopping potential will be the negative of the energy of the fastest electron divided by the charge. Yeah. So that, that, to do that work is pretty easy. I'll clear my work out of the way for you here. And solve for V. So <laughs> it looks to me like it's 1.5 volts, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> isn't that nice? Would it be negative 1.5? Like you know, need to... I would be okay if you wrote that. I think it, yeah, I'm good with negative because it's got to push back, but I don't really see on the diagram here, which side is meant to be the positive side, which side is got to be the negative side, but you're absolutely right. I got to make the negative side of the battery that I would put in that power supply. I got to make it go to the collector, right? I have to connect the negative to the collector side. So if you want to call that negative, go right ahead. All right. I'm going to end the group so we can all get back together and somebody will talk to this. So let's close all rooms. We need to <coughs> right.
All right, well, hopefully everybody will be back here in just a moment. Takes about a minute to close these rooms, which is 19 more seconds, 18. <laughs> And and Justin, go ahead. You're going to do the first one. So you want to share your screen. I just gave you permission. Hopefully it'll work for us. <laughs> we'll see. Otherwise, I'll put mine up and I'll do the uh, I'll do the honors here. All right. And all three of the groups, you were essentially doing very similar problems. I think problem three was probably a little easier. Uh, didn't have as many <laughs> follow on questions, but you know, it's still a, it had a, it had its own little subtleness to it. And they're all, each case, you're going to find out what the energy of the incident photons is or photons are, I guess. And then you're going to calculate kinetic energy or stopping potential. And so, and then there's always a question that follows that on. And so go ahead. Who's talking? Justin, you're going to talk? Shneed. Yeah, I'm going to talk for like A and B. Um, so we took our uh, E equation and set that equal to our work function uh, added onto our kinetic energy. And then we just solved for uh, <laughs> the all uh, the um, energy of, of a photon, and we got uh, six point two e, e volts. And then for B to solve for our uh, kinetic energy, we just set our k equal to our E function subtracted by our work function. So then that was six point two minus. 4.7, and then we got 1.5. Yep, good to go. So that's the energy of the electrons coming across to the collector. So to stop all the electrons which reach the anode, you need you need to provide a negative potential which is equal to the kinetic energy of the fastest electron divided by its charge. So that's that's pretty easy here because we're using EV as a unit. So the stopping potential will just be 1.5 volts. Yeah, so if you put 1.5 volts between, and I, I hate the words cathode and anode, but I anode is the same as collector here, okay? So you have to put a negative uh, voltage on the, on the collector or anode side and uh, that would push the electrons back because they wouldn't have enough energy to overcome the potential energy between the plates. Isn't it neat how you can go right from electron volts of energy to electric potential voltage, just divide through by the E and you don't have to use 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs. You just divide the unit away and you get volts. And so I, I think if you're not believing 1240 EV nanometers, and using electron volts for problems like this. Um, you could do it the other way. It would just be a massive uh, uh, problem with unit conversion. And this makes it simple. And that's why they were invented. All right, thanks, Justin and uh, Shneha. So next group is, uh, let's see, we lost somebody. Who did we lose? Chris? Yeah, any event, who's, uh, who's, who's doing group two? It was uh, Inai, you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so go ahead. Who is your partner? Amaya. Okay, so you guys are both still here. Good. Max, it was your partner, then I guess we lost. All right, go ahead, guys. And I think this, yours was the subtleness right up front. You had to make a decision. And what was your decision right up front? Kinetic energy has to be zero. Yeah. And once they got that, well, then it was easy to find the work function. But they had to make that. Yeah, yeah, literally just calculated HC over the wavelength. But knowing that the work function can be found with the exact frequency of light that causes zero kinetic energy for the electrons, that's the subtle part of this problem, okay? Knowing that HC over lambda was equal to the work function only when kinetic energy is zero is the, uh, is the important point, okay? What you got over there? Frequency is proportional one over the wavelength. Yeah, and the constant proportionality is the speed of light, I guess. All right, so any questions on their problem? Any, I didn't really ask any questions on the first problem. All right, good. Our last one, I guess, Max, you're up. Uh, 
Max, there you go. Got Max's screen. So this is, uh, yep, my screen. HC is 1240 divided by 250, 4.96, that's 7.936 times 10 to the negative 19th joules, which yeah, we need for this part. Energy, yeah. just, just converted units, right? Okay. Yep. And then uh, we need to find the rate of electron emission per unit area. So that's this series of unit conversions. Watt is joules per second, joules cancel, which leaves us electrons per second per meter squared, which is what we want. So we just divided two watts per meter squared by this joule number to get 2.52 times 10 to the 18th. It's a lot of electrons, but probably not a lot of current if you calculate how many amps that is. And all this is the part where we said, hey, increasing the intensity of light, making the light brighter, didn't cause electrons to flow unless you had a high enough frequency, a high enough energy in the electrons, which I guess would be a small enough wavelength, okay, if you didn't meet that criteria. But then you can see here, the bigger the intensity, and the, you know they're dividing through by how many joules are in every or take taken to make every electron. If I had a higher intensity, I would have a greater rate of creating the electrons, but only once I met the threshold. Okay, that's about it. Any questions on that one? I had no equation for that. All I had was unit analysis, and so the subtle part of that problem is seeing okay, what is a watt, a joule per second. I want an electron per second, so divide how many joules per electron, and sure enough, you get the answer to the question, merely by making the units work out right. And in physics, obviously, that's a key thing. Hey, that's all I got, I guess, and we're probably, hey, look at that, two minutes early today on a Friday, and so uh, we'll let everybody go, and I wish you a good weekend. Go look at homework five, because that's a big one here. I'll put... Um, I'll put the uh, the grades for you the for you up in Canvas here in a second, and uh, that that's it. Questions? All right, we'll see you on um, Go ahead. And so, like for the last question, which we did, the only way to get an answer is through the units, right? Yeah, um, that's just I, there's the no units, yeah. there is no equation that I see in the textbook to get you that. You're just manipulating the units and recognizing how many joules cause each electron to be kicked off of that emitter plate, the, the photoelectric plate, the cathode. Yeah, so just making the units work out right. Awesome, thank you. You bet. All right, I I'll have hang a question around. about the optional homeworks. Yeah. When we do those, is it just for us or can we get like an extra point or something? <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, right now it's just for you, okay? okay. But I, I, it's like a lot of things in life for example, I, I probably haven't told you all this, but I can go and look and see who's looking at the videos, who isn't, right? Uh, the, I can look and see who's doing the extra credit problem and who isn't. And so that doesn't come directly into your grade at all, but it does, uh, you know, if borderline cases, things like that, I, I see that kind of stuff, okay? So Got it, I had to ask. <laughs> yeah, no, sure. Sure, uh, you know, but if, if it, it certainly helps me out if, if for some reason something happens down the road, you know, if you've got some, uh, it's called equity, right? That's what we refer to that as in the financial world. You built up equity and karma maybe even by doing some of these things uh, that you don't get direct credit for, but it certainly helps you in the exam. All right, other questions? All right, do look at the, there's a pre-lecture video that's posted on Canvas for Monday and a real short reading quiz. Monday's class, uh, only two problems on the worksheet. It'll be pretty quick. We'll do a little bit of review um, on Monday for the midterm as well. So hopefully I'll have time to go through all that. And I think I will because it's fairly short. Have a great weekend. We'll see you. I'll be hanging out here for a little bit uh, if there's any questions on anything. All right. Take care. Thank you. See you. Um, uh, professor, um, for my question, uh, my internet had kind of cut out. Yeah. So I just, yeah, so my bad. But we, we did the, the question with Max. So oh, yeah. Just, no, just I, I, I watched, I jumped in. I, yeah, I saw you didn't come back because you, and I, I figured it was an internet issue. No worries on that. Yeah. It happens. Awesome. Yeah, it happens. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. See ya. Take care. Have a good weekend. Same there.